the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters in Christ, it is so good to be with you here this afternoon, this evening. Uh, you know, as I look out into the congregation, I just want to thank each and every one of you and those joining us virtually. When I look at you, you make me feel so young. You make me feel like spring has sprung. Every time I see you grin, I'm such a happy individual. Uh, that's, of course, <laughs> referencing a Frank Sinatra song, uh, but today is the first day of spring as well. And it is true, it actually is a heartfelt sentiment that I do feel uh, whenever I have the opportunity to pray with each and every one of you, in person or virtually or a combination thereof. Uh, hopefully you feel a similar sentiment. Uh, we are grateful to God for this day of spring. Uh, actually, the word for Lent is from an old English and an old Dutch word, which actually means spring. And so this spring season of the church is a time of renewal time of preparation for rebirth. We ourselves are grateful for all that God is doing to help bring about that process within our lives. Uh, one thing we want to continually do at the personal and communal level is to make sure that we're continually rebuilding and restoring these beautiful structures we have around us as well. So towards the end of Mass, one of our parish trustees, Mr. Steve Smith, will be offering a brief pres presentation about the Building Restoration Fund uh, but more details about that at the end of Mass. The beginning of Mass here, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are the light of the world. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you lead us in the path of freedom and truth. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. By your help we beseech you, Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in that same charity, with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with your fathers the day I took them by the hand and led them forth from the land of Egypt. For they broke my covenant, and I had to show myself their master, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer will they have need to teach their friends and relatives how to know the Lord. All, from least to greatest shall know me, says the Lord, for I will forgive their evil doing and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. In the days when Christ Jesus was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. Some Greeks who had come to worship at the Passover feast came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loses his life, whoever loves his life, loses it. And whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. I am troubled now, yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? But it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd there heard it and said it was thunder, but others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, this voice did not come for my sake, but for yours. Now is the time of judgment on this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out, and when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. He said this indicating the kind of death he would die. The Gospel of the Lord. something which in the Old Testament, in the Hebrew, it's referred to as berith. Within the New Testament, the Greek of the New Testament, translated as di u thaku. Within the ancient Latin, it was convenire. Within English, we understand it as covenant. Covenant which is so significant, something so sacred throughout all of salvation history of God establishing and building upon the relationship with his people. It's something which he began with his covenantal relationship with Adam and Eve, and then established once again with Noah, and then Abraham, and then King David, and then our Blessed Mother. It's something which it's also alternatively translated to the Latin as testamentum, which in English we get testament. It's way way of the Old Testament, the old covenant that God established with his people there. And then with Christ, we have the fulfillment, the New Testament, 
the new covenant that Jesus desires to establish with each and every one of us. And so, indeed, we ourselves are part of the covenant that God has drawn us into. By virtue of our baptism, we ourselves participate in this. And Jesus himself, he is faithful to the promise that he has made to us, that he will provide us with that sanctifying grace. He will forgive us for our sins. He will lead us in the path of truth and freedom so that we ourselves can encourage and invite others to enter into this same covenantal relationship. We don't enter this merely just on our own. We do, certainly. We make that personal commitment, and during a Lenten season, we do commit on a daily basis to taking up our cross and following that path of discipleship with Jesus at a personal level. But we always do it within the context of the body of believers, so that after our journeys together here, in this journey of covenant on this earth together, we hope one day to be forever in the kingdom of heaven, to dwell there in the fulfillment of God's covenants in his heavenly glory forever and ever. Amen. As a people of the covenant, let us together profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. God, our Heavenly Father, has established this covenant with each and every one of us. He is faithful. He is generous and gracious. Even when we ourselves struggle, God is so good to us. And so we turn out to him with our heartfelt prayers, petitions, and intercessions this evening. For the church, that Jesus, who became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, may have the loyalty and gratitude of all his followers. We pray to the Lord, that God may place his law within the hearts of our national leaders, that they might come to know him and follow his wisdom. We pray to the Lord, Lord, that prudent choices may hasten the end of the pandemic. We pray to the Lord, Lord, that those suffering persecution may look to Jesus who shares our anguish. We pray to the Lord, Lord, for our Immaculate Conception Church family that we may die to self and bear much fruit. We pray to the Lord for those who are ill, especially Art Harris. All those suffering from COVID-19 and their families, all those on our prayer chain and in our books of intention, may they be touched by the healing power of Jesus. We pray to the Lord for those who have died, especially those who have succumbed to COVID-19, our loved ones and all who have died as a result of violence. May they rejoice with the Lord in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for your goodness, grace, and mercy with us. We thank you for establishing and reestablishing a covenant with your people throughout salvation history. Help us to fulfill our end of the covenant, to love you above all else, to deny ourselves, to follow after your Son, Jesus, with the outpouring of your Holy Spirit. 
that we would one day join you to praise you in your kingdom forever and ever. my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that free from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim you. so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. direction. 
confession, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, Andrew's assistant, and all the clergy, remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains a single grain, but if it dies, it bears much fruit.
seated for a little bit. I mentioned at the beginning of Mass, we're talking about being built up here in this Lenten season at the personal level. But Steve Smith is going to be talking with us about the Builder and Restoration Fund. So let's give Steve a very warm spring icy welcome. Well, it's been quite some time since I've been up here, but I'm glad to be here. My reason for being here today is twofold. What I'd like to do is give you a report on the results of our three-year capital, uh, our three-year capital campaign called the Tip Together in Faith campaign, and also to give you a reminder, a reminder of the ongoing building restoration program that we have maintained for quite a long time. Our successful three-year, $1.1 million Together in Faith campaign kicked off in April of 2016. It enabled us to complete a number of major capital projects to continue maintaining and preserving the condition and the safety of all of our facilities. I'd like to give you a report on the, on the projects that were completed. We, re we rebuilt the bell tower that was eight years in coming and $284,000 to complete. It was a four-month project. We replaced the two lower roofs on the church, replaced both of those roofs. We replaced the church kneelers. Do you remember those heavy wooden kneelers? Well, these are much nicer now. We replaced the carpet and the wall covering and fellowship hall, and hopefully we'll be able to gather down there soon. We replaced the church front and south doors, which are all were both were both said for wearing out, and we upgraded the sacristy lighting control panel. In the school. We replaced one more set of window lentils. If you heard me before, there's seldom a time I haven't come up here and said we need to do more window lentils this year. Well, your, your contributions and your stewardship has enabled us to catch up with these window lentils. I think we're able to now not have to concentrate on them every year. And again, that is thanks to your stewardship and your contributions. We brought the school elevator up to current code, which it was badly in need of. In a mechanical heating plant, we tuck pointed the boiler, uh, the boiler chimney. Again, that was another eight year project, eight years in the making. And we rebuilt the burner on the boiler. And the boiler is, has never worked better this year. I think I've been doing this a long, long time, and I've never seen that boiler working better. On the campus grounds, we replaced the sidewalks and steps for the church and the school. You remember across the front of the church, that muddy mess in the spring and the fall along the sidewalk? We took care of all that. We took care of some of the handicap ramps. We took care of some bad steps. We did a lot of concrete work all around the sidewalks. And we paved our failing parking lots. And then one other piece we did in there, we were able to we were able to satisfy and pay off a long-standing substantial debt, which is really a good feeling. Now, we've completed all these projects on schedule and on budget, but we still have ongoing maintenance and repair needs throughout our aging campus. The successful building restoration program is based on an annual contribution of $150 per family per year to maintain our aging campus and our buildings. An example of some of the projects, and this is, believe me, a very small example, of some of the projects that we tar that are targeted. Some are long-term, some are shorter, some are short-term, some are longer. We need to repair the concrete walk at the school entrance. If you've entered the school over the last few months, there's some real serious trip hazards out there. We need to get
is done, get that taken care of, will likely happen hopefully sometime in April. We need to wait for the ground to thaw good. We, we need to replace, the, now this is an important one. We need to replace the Father James's air conditioning in the rectory. We need to get that one done. We need to seal coat and, re, and paint our parking lots and that will happen in August. We need to replace a section of sidewalk between the church and the rectory. It is to, it's starting to cave in. And some of the longer term, we need to rebuild the failing retaining wall in front of the shrine. You may not really notice that walking by it every day, but it, is, it has moved, it has bowed out quite substantially. It was installed in 1965. But we likely we were trying to get that done in May, but due to some contractor conflicts, it probably won't happen until a year from May, but I hope it'll hold up. We need to replace the gym roof. That, if we replace the gym roof, that will be the last roof. We replace the gym, we replace every roof on the campus in all of the buildings. And we need to replace or enhance our 1933 vintage steam boiler. 1933 vintage boiler, and that's what keeps us warm, and it's the only one. We need to take good care of that boiler. Now there are four building restoration envelopes in your envelope pack, and those, those are for your contributions. And again, I want to emphasize that your contributions and your stewardship or would make all of this happen. Now, we put four envelopes in there to enable you to spread that out over the course of the year. And, and if you feel really generous and you want to do more, thank you very much. We, we, there, with everyone's participation, we can complete all of these repairs, and we have for a number of years. All the repairs and upgrades, and we can do all of this over time. There has been some interest over a family or an individual, and this has happened during the early on in the campaign, if one family or one individual wanted to step up and adopt a project. If you have an interest in that, if you want to adopt a project, make it your own, make it your family's own, let Father James know and we can arrange that. So again, I want to thank everyone for a number of years. I've been up here for a long time. And your stewardship and your contributions are what make all of this happen. Thank you very much, and God bless. Thank you very much, Steve, for your words, for your wisdom, for your hard work many, many years of this. Again, we uh, have gotten so many good things done with your kind of vision and leadership with that, so thank you very much, and thanks to all of you for your help and support as well. We'll now have our weekend announcements. Butter parade orders will be here next weekend, call Sunday, and available after every Mass. You will be able to pick up your order at the school kitchen door number seven, or drive up and park by the shrine steps. A CCW member will be at both places to deliver your order to you. Thank you for your support. Next week is Coins for Social Justice Weekend. All loose change in collection will be earmarked for social justice concerns. Envelopes will be available near the entrances to the church. Pastoral Ministry will be collecting donations for food share during the month of March. All cash and food donations will be given to SECA. The Hagee's Pizza Sale supporting the parish faith formation programs has started. Next weekend, someone will be in the narthex after the Masses but orders can be placed at the parish office through our website or by calling the Faith Formation Office. 
Orders will be taken through April 12th. Thank you for your support. Very good. Thank you, Carleen. Together, let us stand and pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Wednesday of this week, many of you are aware, we celebrated St. Patrick. Uh, so if you have Irish heritage or honorary Irish heritage, a uh, very belated top of the morning to you. Hope it was a, a good day for you. Uh, yesterday, as a universal church, we celebrated St. Joseph. Uh, and in this year of St. Joseph, a very special solemnity indeed. At the entrances, or as you head out now at the exits, you can pick up a prayer card that's got a prayer to St. Joseph for our community here at Immaculate Conception. There's an English and a Spanish side to it, so you can hang on to that and pray that throughout the rest of this year of St. Joseph. Um, many thanks again to all of you for your presence, your participation, your patience, your goodness, for being who you are. Um, you know, hearing a little bit from the gospel and what I was trying to speak to within the homily, um, the other day I was trying to look at some letters of what I thought was some kind of alphabet, and there was alpha and omega and theta, and I didn't totally understand what it was. It was all Greek to me. <laughs> all right. <laughs> with that, the Lord be with you. <laughs> Bow down and pray for God's blessing. Bless, O Lord, your people who long for the gift of your mercy, and grant that what of your prompting they desire, they may receive by your generous gift, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Amen.